So I'm Dr. Ming Lim and I'm a paediatric neurologist, a, a children's uh, doctor looking after children with brain conditions. I work at the Evelina Children's Hospital, which is part of Guy's and St. Thomas's. I'm both a clinician uh, and also a researcher. Um, encephalitis is uh, brain inflammation. This is when the brain you know, swells up. It can happen in any uh, age group uh, and even in children. Um, in the UK, we probably see about you know, five to six thousand cases uh, a year, and there's certainly far more of that um, you know, um, internationally. The two um, key causes of um, encephalitis is infection and inflammation. Um, in infection, um, the commonest cause that people would have heard of is a viral infection like herpes simplex encephalitis. Sometimes bacteria can also cause uh, encephalitis and rarely uh, parasites and also fungal uh, causes of encephalitis. Um, in the last five years or so, we're also starting to recognize that the immune system itself can target the brain and cause uh, an inflammation in the brain. And this can happen when there are humoral components of the immune system, like antibodies, or cells getting into the brain. Some of the conditions we hear of are uh, post-infectious encephalitis. This is when it occurs after an infection. Um, ADEM is another form of um, uh, infective uh, uh, and the triggering uh, inflammation. And this is acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, whereby inflammation occurs both in the brain and sometimes in the spine as well. Uh, in children uh, in, in particular, there are also rarer forms of encephalitis that may be genetically predetermined. So some children are born uh, with mutations in genes that make them more likely to get um, infections. Um, although we think that these are the common uh, causes of encephalitis, in a lot of cases we still do not find a cause of uh, encephalitis in children. And importantly as well, sometimes both can coexist together, i.e. an infectious encephalitis presenting again later with an immune uh, encephalitis. It it generally depends on whether you have an infectious or an immune uh, encephalitis. In an infectious encephalitis, it can start with feeling like you just have the flu, and that could be a fever, a headache, and then over hours, sometimes days, and occasionally over weeks, uh, you deteriorate, um, uh, and sometimes this can be rapid and this deterioration um, can lead to you becoming less conscious or even uh, into a coma. And what sometimes happens as well, depending on the part of the brain that is affected by the infection, uh, one can also get seizures and abnormal uh, movements. In a very young child, uh, you can sometimes not see all these symptoms and all you see is a listless, uh, you know, floppy child. Um, in um, an immune you know, condition, you often get a viral prodrome. So this is when you have a virus uh, and then get better before the onset of symptoms again. Often the symptoms are slightly slower and more insidious and this can affect your memory, this can affect your behaviour, uh, often noticed by parents rather than the child themselves. And then going, to have, going on to have all the symptoms due to the infection or sorry the inflammation uh, affecting parts of the brain. And this could be seizures, movement disorders, uh, sometimes even psychiatric uh, symptoms. And quite peculiarly, uh, a lot of children also have sleep uh, disturbance uh, as symptoms of immune uh, encephalitis. The key uh, investigation for investigating uh, both immune and infective encephalitis is the lumbar puncture. This is sometimes also termed as a spinal tap. This is when a little needle is put through the spinal uh, fluid, uh, sorry, spinal canal to draw spinal fluid that can be then looked under the microscope. This is what we call constitutionally looked at, whereby the cells are uh, uh, looked at. And then after that gets sent to very specific laboratories where the immune and the infectious causes are investigated or tested very carefully. One of the things tests you may have heard of is the PCR. This is when the genetic material of the virus is amplified so that it can be detected very quickly um, so that we can tailor treatment to the child. Um, Sometimes uh, blood tests are also done to confirm some of the infectious and immune uh, causes. 
occasionally and um, more and more so these days imaging has been used more often so you children would undergo a brain scan called an MRI or a CT to determine the cause of uh, infection and inflammation. Um, on occasions um, to detect um, inflammation in the brain, uh, an, an, electro, an EEG is, for, uh, is performed. This is an electroencephalogram, uh, whereby the electrical activity of the brain um, is uh, measured. And this can give us clue as to how the brain is functioning, but also clues as to whether there is infection or inflammation. I think that um, uh, treatment, there are a few overarching principles of treatment. One is that you've got to treat the underlying cause as quickly as possible and sometimes you may have to treat the underlying cause before the results come back. So for example if it was an infectious uh, cause or one suspects an infectious cause then antimicrobials are used and these are uh, treatments against bacteria, uh, viruses, parasites or fungus depending on what we think is the most likely uh, cause. And um, if it was an immune uh, cause that we suspect, then immune treatments are often used. Um, and this would form uh, in the form of uh, corticosteroids. So these are very uh, strong treatments to suppress uh, the immune system. Um, IVIG is often used, and these are immunoglobulins that are pulled from many donors uh, that appear to have an immune uh, suppressive role or immune modulating role. Uh, and, uh, or in sicker patients, uh, a more um, um, a sort of a, a, a form of plasma exchange uh, can be used whereby all the humoral components of the immune system is removed to make you better quicker. Um, on occasions, um, when we are still unclear as to whether the cause is immune or infectious, both strategies could be used together. Like all um, things in, 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 in children, no two children are the same, no two childs the same. Uh, some children go on to recover with no apparent problems, but some children go on to have a lot of you know, significant difficulties uh, as a result of the encephalitis. Um, researchers have looked very hard to see if there are any specific predictors of how children uh, might do and the core themes are often how severe the inflammation was initially, how severe or how much of the brain you know, was affected. Um, but ultimately, um, all this um, is, at least we think, minimized by the rapid uh, diagnosis and rapid initiation of treatment uh, to maximize the potential uh, of the recovery.